following recording is done by Redemption Hill Church. We are delighted that you are listening in and pray that God would use this message to bless you and equip you to glorify His name. However, we also want to encourage you that this resource is in no way meant to replace your need for a local church or the biblical care and guidance you receive from your pastor and church elders. May God bless you as you listen to this sermon. Uh, one thing that I want to begin by saying here is uh, if any of us are thinking why are we born in this time? Right? If you are thinking I sh it would have been good if I was 50 years before uh, that era or maybe 100 years before that era. Some of us might be thinking oh no, I am in this age group, uh, I cherish my earlier age group or my childhood. It was far better than now. I wish I can go back in a time machine and go there. Some of us who are young might be thinking, see, I'm going through a lot of tough times. I wish I can just fast forward this and go 20 years because I think that time things would just be peaceful and, and, and set up. Now, all these feelings are valid. I have those feelings too. But I want to assure you that we must remind ourselves that very statement that was told to Esther, that we are here in that particular age group. We are here in the particular time of in the history of, of the universe or the world. We are here by design, not by accident. So the, the timing is also part of that design. As much as the family in which you are born is also part of God's design, as much as which work you're doing right now is part of his design. This we must receive by faith. Okay, it's not a vain thing. It is not just a you know sense of hoping that, yeah, I, I hope I am, you know, what you're saying is right. No, not that way. It is that we who are on the Zoom group, we do have a special privilege. And that privilege is invested in us, not because of our merits, but because of the one who created us and who loves more than we can imagine. So when um, uh, Sister Preeta was mentioning from Psalm 2, uh, from that single you know, word, kiss. That, that was a profound thing that you had shared, sister. You know, the, the it's not just the emotion one side, to know that the person who is seeking it is also equally desirous of it. Right? It is very difficult to understand that, but it is so pleasing to think and understand that, right? That God who created is so desirous of you and me. Right? So I want to begin by leaving you. So we are born in such a time as this. You know, I was encouraged by a short video you might have seen. I was doing the rounds in WhatsApp some time back when one of the, uh, one preacher was uh, encouraging, saying, don't be too upset for your children who are born in this time. Because obviously, you know, we, we, we know. <laughs> See, I'm 48 years, 49 years now. So I know, uh, you know, into what era my children have been born. Um, you know, there's a little feeling that I wish they were born in my time. You know, because now they are going to see far more difficult times here and things like that. But then, you know, that uh, preacher was encouraging, saying that don't forget the same thing that I told you earlier. Don't forget that they are born for a time like this. Right. You understand. Perhaps I will not be able to handle it, but they will be able to handle it by the power of God. And they are created for that. Okay. So there is no time like that. That is bad. I'll give you an, uh, just an illustration. Uh, I, I, think, I think within this group, I can tell I've not taken permission from the gentleman, but uh, he shares in his testimony. There's a gentleman who is a believer. He is an uh, inspector general of police. Uh, he was uh, by the side of uh, Rajiv Gandhi when he was assassinated. So he, there were two uh, IPS officers. One lost his life in that uh, bomb blast, and the other one who survived is a believer, a man of God. And uh, uh, he, when he shares, he used to say that, you know, on the, on the morning that uh, this took place, 
uh, one of the IPS officers called him and said, uh, I don't feel this is a good day. I'm feeling something is wrong. I'm not happy with this day. So uh, uh, Pradeep Philip replied uh, to him on phone and said, uh, for me, every day is good with Jesus Christ. You know, he's a man who's vocal about his faith, right? That, uh, you know, whether it's in the echelon, uh, corridors of uh, uh, power or wherever it is. So he had made that statement to him. Neither did he know, nor did the other gentlemen know that today one of them is going to lose their life and there's something devastating that is ahead of them, right? And what had happened through that day is he would recount saying that uh, while they were walking behind Rajiv Gandhi and uh, just moments before that, Pradeep Philip got a call on his phone and he had to turn and he was slightly behind him when the bomb blast took place and Pradeep lost his hearing. I mean, his eardrum was broken and the other IPS officer lost his life, unfortunately, right? But Pradeep is always thankful for this, uh, you know, protection that God gave, but connecting to what he, see, they both began the day. One felt the day was going to be a bad day and the other one, Honestly, doesn't it have it in control with him, but he knows the one who created that day, right? He knows in whom his day, why is the day good for you and me? It is not because the climate is good. It is not because it's going to rain or it's hot. It's not because the temperature will be 22 degrees centigrade. It is because I am in the hands of the one who ordains the temperature and the climate and the situation and my walk and my heartbeat and yours too, right? So that makes sense for that song, which is, this is the day, I'll be glad in it. This is the day that God has made. What do you mean by this is the day that God has made, right? It is because he is the one. The word of God also says that. He commands, like, you know, a bridegroom comes out of the chamber, the sun, you know, rises and it sets, right? <clears throat> you cannot fine tune it further. You cannot detune it lesser. You cannot stop it before God is going to say, stop, right? It is continuing to do that. Whatever you do, whatever, uh, you know, uh, nuclear missiles or bombs that we are going to make, I think we will still not be able to stop that until the sun whose feet we have to kiss will say stop, right? That is the God whom we serve. That is the God whom we celebrate when we break bread. That is the God we are talking about on the Zoom, right? It is about him. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, son of David, who died on the cross, rose up from the dead, resurrected from the dead, in whom you and I have been blessed to believe and trust again by his grace, by faith, which we talk about. But it is so beautiful that today is a good day and we can go out comfortably, we can do our things comfortably in whatever situation that we are in because the day is good for us, right? So I just want to connect these things. It's one thought that I've been saying in, in a few ways here to say that if there's anything that's in any of our hearts that makes us think that, oh, this is the wrong time, probably this is the wrong situation, probably I'm in the less privileged situation. No, that's a false understanding. No, you are there because God has asked you to be there, right? Of course, it is our, uh, you know, freedom to compare and say, why me? Why me in this situation? Why not that person in that situation? No, it's a valid question for which I don't have the answer. But the only answer we have, you have to trust your savior for it. I have to trust my savior for it. The moment we do that, things will get settled, even though we don't have all the answers. The problem of comparison is because our eyes are not set on our savior, right? I want you to understand that the problem of comparison would come only in a believer, only when our eyes and our focus have turned away from him who is our savior to something lesser than that, which God does not want, right? It could even lead up to idolatry. Okay, so point number one that I want to say is, it's not just a mere hope. Every one of us on the Zoom, I would believe, we are believers, right? We are ones who have trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ by his grace. And therefore, when we get up in the day, this day is good irrespective of what the situation is. We receive that by faith. Confess it with your mouth. One exercise I will tell you. When you get up in the morning, say it out with your heart. 
this day is good you know many days i have a lot of tension in the office these days you know things keep coming and going things keep going. there are you know <clears throat> literally sleepless nights it comes to situations when in the night i do not want to sleep off because i know when i sleep off when i wake up it's the next day and time has gone so i'm facing so i'm just sleeping you know <laughs> let's say 12 am in the morning or 1 am in the morning okay i've just finished or dropped off things in in my work with the tension and said stop knowing that tomorrow morning there's another set of it's coming or ready waiting for me and the only time of peace that i would have in that sense of it is through that night you know i dread to sleep off because i want to keep awake so that it apparently looks like i have a lot of time and the moment i wake up in the morning the first thing i will tell you when i wake up the first thing crossing my mind is not the word of god first thing crossing my mind is nothing like that but what is crossing my mind is the conversation i closed off at 11 pm or 12 am with my boss or colleague and which awaits me and my immediately my mind is starting to think about what to do next and then i have to remind myself consciously oh no 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 the first thing is not that the first thing is to thank the lord for this day right and then i settle up and then say oh god yes thank the lord then i remind myself what i told you just now saying that see this day is good not because my boss is good this day is good because the one who created it who is my savior is good he is with me and therefore i remind myself and often i even confess myself this is the day this is good the day is never bad in a believer's life right okay let's go on i want us to look at two things today and uh, we look at uh, hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 i would uh, request anyone to uh, read it uh, hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 just so that you know it's not uh, monotonous anyone could read maybe can i ask you joshin to read uh, 11 verse 6 joshin you are muted Yeah. Hebrews eleven six. You got it. Ah, uh, brother, I think. Uh, i don't have my bible at hand with me. okay no no problem so, anybody else me ronnie yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. hebrews 11:6 yeah and without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to god must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him it it, it seems to be very simple straightforward and almost we could skip it because this doesn't look very applicable to you and me right why do we need to talk about basic thing like that uh but i i would want us to think about it without faith it is impossible to please him right so in our walk of faith in our christian living this is not for unbelievers because if you look at the whole of chapter 11 these are all believers it is actually we call it the hall of fame of those who had faith and beginning from abraham and so on and so forth and moses and everybody goes on to a point where the writer of the hebrew says for lack of space and time i can't list out all those and then he you know says something almost in the sense of etc 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 and goes on so this is men of faith and then in between that just after talking about enoch he says that without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to him to god must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him i want to remind ourselves as believers this that each one of us here must believe see without that it is impossible to do what i said first this is the day that god has made it is good we will not be able to trust god for it if we do not believe this right it seems funny it might sound funny that we are already believers right what are we talking about faith we already have faith no but may not be that we are exercising that faith 
right? So I want us to look at a few simple aspects about what faith is, and I'll connect uh, a few other thoughts from uh, Second Corinthians, okay? So, but one thing to point, without faith, it is impossible to please. So if any one of us here are saying that, you know, my aim is to please my savior, God is also saying that my child, I want you to build your faith in me. Two, not just build, I want you to exercise your faith in me. Two are both are two different things, right? They might be related, but I want you to exercise your faith because think about it in another place, it talks about that, right? It is just like physical exercise. It's just like, uh, you know, getting our bo body and muscles worked up, worked, worked to, to be better, right? It has to be exercised. And that precisely is what God is doing. When you look at the book of James or uh, Peter and places like that, you will think like that, right? He talks about, for example, he connects it with certain suffering and says that, you know why? No, 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 no. It is for us to be refined. It is for us to grow. It is for us so that we will endure, right? It is not just a, you know, by mistake this happened or, you know, God just suddenly cho chose uh, Georgian families so that they just suffer and suffer and suffer and things like that. No, God doesn't do that. God doesn't do that. That is not the point. God knows exactly. We'll, we'll touch upon those points. Okay. But the necessary thing here is without faith, it is impossible to God. So the question to me, George, is now, uh, am I exercising that faith? So I need to analyze a little bit and say, okay, okay, I'm preaching, but am I exercising the faith? Oh, I'm doing many things, but am I exercising faith? You know, it's a good question to ask, right? There's always introspection is not bad. It's always good. In fact, do you know that when we break bread, we introspect, right? We read that portion. To say, let a man examine himself means what? Introspect. Without it, it's a good thing to introspect. It is not a guilty thing, right? There's no there's no problem in thinking. I might be perfect in some area, but still, there's no problem in introspecting. Okay, is it going well, right? Introspection is absolutely necessary because it has to have a fruit out of it, right? It's not just introspecting and going away. Okay, it's not like looking into the mirror. James talks about that looking at the word of God. It is so that then we will just put our, you know, make slight changes to our hair, changes to our eye spectacle, and then look better, right? When you look at the mirror of God, you're willing to make some changes. If you are not willing, James says it is foolishness, it's useless. It's just like you getting up with all uh, hair and everything haywire, and then you go to the mirror and say, ha, and then go away without making any change to what your appearance is. Okay? Without faith, it is impossible. Whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists, and that he rewards those who seek to him. Now you begin to see that, right? God is rewarding. God looks at your faith. God looks at your trust. He wants to bless. He wants to give. He wants to lead. He wants to give you peace. But we must draw close in faith. Now, what is faith? Just we need to touch two, three points there and go. Okay, 11, chapter 11, verse 1 and 2. Uh, anybody else? Michelle, are you there? Can, I, can you read? Please. Oh, sorry. You don't have a mic like... Uh, or uh, Ashok and Steve. It just says run. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, could you say the portion again, Jiji? Hebrews 11, no? 11, 1 and 2. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. Okay, that's enough. That's enough. Okay. By it, the people of old received, my version says, divine approval or commendation. What is people of old? All that was spoken here from Abraham, Moses, Enoch, and goes on, right? By what did they get the approval? By a simple thing called faith, right? We need to look at it a little more, okay? Simple thing called faith. And what is that faith? This is the best definition that I have seen. Anybody who asks, uh, you know, even an unbeliever who would ask, what is faith? Because we, we would confuse it with uh, things like hope uh, or, you know, positive thinking or things like that, right? What is faith? Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. You understand? There itself, you know, the hope and the assurance comes in, right? It's the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. These are strong, rooted, grounded words. Faith is not... Uh, I, I think, I wish it will rain today. I'm positive it will rain today. That is not faith. B because on what is it based on? You understand? That is not faith. Faith is not saying that life will get better. Be positive. That is not faith. 
because on what basis am i saying life will get better i don't have a basis right so it is empty it is vain so that's the difference between one who knows christ and has christ living in you and one who does not have that because in whom the object of the faith is what is most important it is not the attitude of faith it is not that wow this guy is always positive man you know anything that he says you know is just positive you know even if the world turns upside down he's so positive that it is straight even if there is darkness he will make it look like light that is not faith faith has to be rooted and grounded in the person of jesus christ that's the faith that is talking here remember the previous verse we read without faith it is impossible to please god you have to believe that he exists first of all yes that is not you have to know that he rewards you also so there is something that he transacts with you and me it's the assurance of things hoped for not just a mere positive approach towards it it is the conviction of things not seen you see conviction comes from what in the sense conviction means uh, you know deep rooted clarity right it's the conviction conviction we say right oh wow wonderful he's got a great conviction about his values at work right that means you can't change it you can he's not one who will change or manipulate or today is convicted tomorrow not convicted right conviction so that conviction is something that we and god is ask ask us to have faith is the assurance of things hoped for conviction of things not seen okay i'll give you a little example but it, it's not really a one to one match but <clears throat> you know 20 25 years ago when i joined as a management trainee training with parry and company we had something called an outbound training okay so it is a personality development so you have to go camp outside and in, in kodaikanal and then do certain tasks and cross a river with uh, you know carrying a big guy it's like something like a military kind of things right you don't know how to swim but they want you to cross you might fall it is fine you should work out how you will survive from that all that is great fun it was right one thing that they did was an exercise to check the level of trust a person has in the fellow human being right so what we did is we would just stand around okay around five or six people will stand in a circle in a little distance then they will blindfold me and ask me to just fall back okay i should just fall back you might fall whatever it is but you know that your five friends are around you right so it is very interesting that is very difficult to fall like that because the moment you try to fall your your mind kicks in to say that what if they don't hold you what if it slips from their hand it's a ground it's grass there but then you won't fall it's beautiful to see how we all reacted right it's very easy to see the one who trusts he will keep just falling you know he'll just fall left right and center and what happens the five friends will never let him fall down right they will never want you to hit your head on the ground right but 90% of the people could not do that because they did not trust and that is a simple example you know that 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 that, that in in real circumstances or terms that we try it out and i used to quote that also semester can you hear me yes we can hear you oh sorry okay i didn't get stuck sorry okay uh, uh suti just told me that i got stuck probably their connection then so um you you understand why am i bringing this here so beloved when we look back at our lives and say we know about faith we know that we believe in jesus we know that we have the word of god we want to but we need to introspect and check and see and try to see whether we are exercising faith right it is the assurance of things hoped for it is the conviction of things not seen very important not seen right so it is a thing that is not seen that we have to put our faith and trust in the lord jesus christ for right now i want you to also look at the previous chapter chapter 10 verse 36 if somebody could read that Any, anyone else could read that steve uh, you have a mic can you read that for me please hebrews 10 verse 36 okay. did you ask me Yeah, Steve. Steve, yes. Steve, Steve. Um, Hebrews ten verse thirty-six. Yeah. Waiting from that time until his enemies should be made a footstool for his feet. 
No, no, 10, 10, 36. 36, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 For you have, you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. Okay. So you have need of endurance so that you may do the will of God and receive what is promised. You have need of endurance, right? Okay, connect it with faith, right? Now you see, it, it then from this passage, verse, I'm just taking that verse uh, 36. If you flow down from that, then chapter 11 comes, right? So the whole aspect of faith comes after that. So he's saying here, you have need of endurance. If you look at the context there, it is talking about, uh, uh, can, can you read from verse 32 onwards now? Yeah. But recall the former days when after you were enlightened, you endured a hard struggle with sufferings. Sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction, and sometimes being partners with those so treated. For you had compassion on those in prison, and you joyfully accept the plundering of your property, since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and, and, and an abiding one. Okay, okay. So just look at the context. He's trying to tell, the writer of the Hebrews is trying to tell them, see, don't throw, that then comes the other verse that we read, don't throw away your confidence in verse 35 and 36. For you have need of endurance, if you have to, what is the point? So that you may do, to do the will of God. What do we talk about? We want to please God, right? All of us, anybody in this group who is saying that I really don't want to do the will of God. No, all of us want to do the will of God. It's only, the difference is only this. Some of us probably have not understood what we have said, right? We want to, but we have not understood. We don't know what we have committed to. We do not know that, you know, how to get it implemented, right? What is it to please God? We don't know, but we want to. Right? I mean, let's make that as a denominator. We know that right? we want to do that, but we are not able to do that for certain reason. Now, the same thing, the audience in this in this book here, right, he's reminding them, they say, you have need of endurance so that you will be able to do the will of God and so that you will receive what is promised. Okay, and prior to that, when you look at it, he's just asking them to recall. See, recall in the initial days, in the former days, you know, after you were enlightened, that means you have come to know the Lord, know His understanding, you endured a hard struggle with suffering. You were able to endure. It's not that, you know, this is a sudden change of events and, you know, something different has happened. No, no, earlier, look at it a little more, a bit earlier. You were willing for that. In fact, you know, we were publicly exposed or, you know, things were happening, maybe in your family, you know, let's connect it to our situation, right? Where, okay, you know, people ridiculed you for your faith, maybe your family opposed you, maybe for your marriage you stood, and maybe for, you know, certain truth in the classroom, in the secular place, you stood firm, and it, it was so natural to you. It was not like a burden for you. It was like, you know, <laughs> come on, if we don't do this, then what's the, what's our faith, right? It was so natural and flowing out. And what was the root of that? The root of it, the root of it is because uh, verse 34b, you knew that you yourself had a better position and an abiding one. See, that was why it was so free to say, that, oh, I don't care. Even if I don't get this property, challenge, it's fine. Oh, my father will not give me. My mother will not. Just fine. My faith is going to take away these things. My privilege is fine. No problem. You know, it never occurred to you like a battlefield. It just occurred to you like, okay, this is, yeah, you endure it. That's fine, right? But then what happened now? Right, so he's saying you have need of endurance. Recall, what is that? See, this. Why am I connecting this? This is all leading to the faith, right? How do you know that you have exercised your faith? It is some of these evidences that are there in your life. I mean, we, I don't need to judge you. You can judge yourself, right? I don't need to think. I don't know your heart, but you don't know my heart. But at the same time, you can judge yourself. Okay, and the Lord is there with you, so He sees also, right? So there is need of endurance. That point I wanted to see. Exercise of faith requires endurance. We'll go a little bit uh, further to see that before we close today as well. Now it's not so much bad that as we think. Now I I tell this but cautiously. This is my understanding. But I'll uh, see. I my prayer is never that I should have more suffering. My prayer is always that God do not lead me into suffering. Do not lead me into temptation. I don't want to suffer. I don't want to suffer. I I don't know if I am. Uh, my faith is less. Uh, to make such a statement or prayer, then God knows my heart, 
right? The point is, no, I'm, I'm always praying, not take away suffering. I'm not going to, I don't want sickness, I don't want uh, difficulty, no, not that. Even though I know that, you know, that is, uh, that will lead to, uh, you know, growth of faith and things like that. But I never pray for that. See, that I leave it to God's hand because he knows. I don't want that. Without that suffering, I want to grow. Without that suffering, I want to love him more. I want to do that. That is my desire even. I don't think that's a wrong desire to think like that, right? But at the same time, I, we know in the back of our mind that God has said, in case you go through, then remember, don't be surprised by the fiery trials that come. James talks about that, right? Don't be surprised by that right, when it comes. So it's not that we all as believers, somehow we live, oh, our life is now gone. It, it is all suffering. Every Christian should be have tears in his eyes from morning to evening and, you know, have troubles and sickness. No, who's that? That is opposite of that. Isn't that what God saved us out from? Right? The consequences of sin. Isn't that what God has healed us? What is the whole point of, you know, God, uh, you know, uh, sa salvation and the cross and the, and, and the healing that comes from the cross and all. No, God has saved us. But what he is trying to say is, there is a greater purpose here. And that we need to allow God to fulfill in our lives. And it necessarily comes through exercise of faith. I will tell you, I will be the happiest person to run away from this business of faith. Not in the sense of faith in Christ. The need to apply faith every day. You know, I would want this time to be over so that we are with the Lord and no more faith required. You know where it says that? Okay, in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, don't, you don't need to turn to it. When it talks about love, it ends, you know, the last verse, what it says, you know, it says many things, then it says many things will stop because, you know, once we, uh, we are not perfect now, knowledge is not perfect. Once we will be face to face, then everything will be perfect. The last statement, it says faith, hope and love abide, but the greatest of these is not faith. Anybody? The greatest of faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these three is love. Yeah. Yeah. Love. It should be faith, no? Because that's the strongest point, right? Faith. You know, the, the, you know hero of faith. You know? Because why? Faith is ending one day. You don't need faith is here because we don't see, right? We don't see face to face. But then everything is going to be clear. It's going to be free. And I'm waiting for that day. It is a tough thing to, you know, <laughs> need to apply faith in our decision making, right? I just wish that the Lord will just come here and tell, here, boss, go out and do this. And then, you know, walk here and do this. Of course, he does that. He intervenes in time and space uh, according to his plan and purpose. And we are so grateful for that. But that is not the natural order of the day, right? God wants us to live by faith. We are justified by faith. We live by faith. Meaning what? In simple terms, we will have to trust him. Okay, this day is good. I will not be able to say good after analyzing all the parameters and looking at the weather, weatherman's forecast and then looking at the possibilities around me and then say, hey, scientifically, this day is good. And then I'm going ahead. That is not faith, right? Faith is because the one who called the sun to rise today and the one who makes my heart beat, his name is Jesus Christ, because I am called by him. I have a purpose which will be fulfilled on this earth for that day before which he will never call me back. Right? Just one encouragement, encouraging thought that I want to leave with you. I heard Benny Prasad once. Many of you might know Benny Prasad, right? He was here. He holds a Guinness record of, uh, I think, the shortest time in which he traveled most all all the countries in the world. But that was because God gave him a vision to go like that, and uh, you know, through just simple uh, music, uh, just convey the message of the gospel. So he said. Um, he also got a chance in a very very strange way or a miraculous way to go to North Korea. Right, and North Korea, and he was going as an official delegation, and then uh, part of an official delegation. So he said, when he left from here to North Korea, he knew, he told his mother, saying that, Ma, I don't know whether I'll come back. Right? Because he didn't know, right? What, what's going to happen? They could arrest him, they could put him in jail, they could, be there. we know what's happening there, right? But he went there and he said he was able to share. <laughs> in fact, one, one, one funny episode he said, he said that the moment he landed, he had two. Uh, there, whatever CID or police officers assigned to him, they would not, they will not leave him. So he said, <laughs> they will, they would never, uh, you know, they would never leave me, but they would forsake me. I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, that's the statement that he made because they are human beings, right? But they would never leave me. They will always be there wherever he goes because they are, they are critical of it. But the point that I want to tell is, he made one statement. He said, I returned to India because 
it is not yet my time in the Lord's calendar. I found that a profound statement. You know, our confidence in our life is not because we are health conscious or literally that we have to do, of course, we don't play around and mess around with uh, God's ordained natural aspects of our life. But at the same time, we must necessarily by faith know that you cannot extend or decrease the cubit span of your life. That also is beautifully programmed by God. I won't use the word pro program might be a wrong word to use here, but beautifully designed by God. All right. Till that time. So that's our confidence, for example, in the COVID period also. Right. It is not my time. So how can COVID come and take me away? Right. But if it's my time, yes, it can take. Now, that is not a vain hope. We are not saying a vain kind of, uh, you know, escapism here. We know for sure the Lord has a purpose in my life, in each one of your lives. Until that is accomplished, nobody can take you. No persecution can take you off. No sickness can take you off. But when it is time that he should take us, it might be one way or the other. Okay, so we must understand that. Okay, so I want to leave you with that part of encouragement as I continue here. Okay, so we have need of endurance. Why endurance? As we exercise our faith in our life, there are aspects in which we need to endure. Endurance has to do with a little bit of re repetition of things happening, right? Once again, it happens and then you take care of it and God blesses and guides you and strengthens you for it. Okay. Now let us also look at a few passages. One, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Lidjo, if you're there, can I request you to read? Sorry, I'm just, I just wanted to be more uh, lively. That's why I'm just calling out any names. If you could. Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17 and 18. Now the Lord is the spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. Okay. You see here, so who, who is the qualifier here? Okay, look at it. Now, the, this is the story of you and me. This is not the story of, let's say, Hudson Taylor. Yeah, it is his story also. It is our story also. It's not just the story of Dr. Sam Combination. He, he, he went to the Lord two days ago, right? What a, what a man of God, right? The founder of FMBB. And I've heard him. And, you know, when he was younger, I've, I've you know, we've interacted to it. So beautiful, right? But it is his story as well as my story, right? It's, it's not in how we quantify things. If you are called by the Lord, if you are known, if you hear his voice, if you are his sheep, it's our story also. What is our story? Right now, when we read it, please read it for yourself. Right, Joshin should be saying, Yeah, this is my story. The Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord there is freedom. I am free, I have been set free. Right, why? Because the Holy Spirit of God is in me, He did that work, He has given me. Right, I may or may not be physically experiencing it, or I may or may not be feeling in my circumstance currently, whether you know it's really working or not, it doesn't matter. The truth of the matter is this. If you know the Lord, right, the Spirit of God has set you free and he is in you. And then what is he also doing? Verse 18 onwards, right? Some of us might be looking at the mirror and saying, hey, it looks like my glory has decreased from glory to glory. I mean, earlier it was better, now it's worse and worse and worse, right? We might think like that, right? But the truth is not that. We might be thinking like that. Okay, we might have failed, we might be failing also, but the truth of the matter is the Holy Spirit is in the process of building us up. We all with unveiled faith, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. For that comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Right? See, that is why I can confidently know that. That is why I can confidently know that. Now, I'll tell you one thing which I have mentioned probably earlier here also. I make one statement uh, which might sound a little, a little bit of a, you know, worrisome, that if you ask me in my life of faith earlier and now, when I am all the more confident about my faith, it is earlier, not now. Right? I am far less confident in my walk of faith now then earlier what does that mean let me explain before you know you you shoot me down okay what i'm trying to say here is earlier 
with less of understanding about certain aspects of situations that can come and go in our life, there was more confidence thinking that nothing will happen, right? There was more confidence in my own ability to get things done. I can speak well, therefore, if I lose this job, tomorrow I can get another job in which I can speak well, right? That thinking was there earlier. That thinking is not there now. Now the thinking is very clear. I know that whether I know English or not and demonstrate my skills or not, unless God opens that door, I will not get any job. You understand? That thinking came through, is that a bad thinking or a good thinking? Right? It came through experience and as God led through many things, slowly that clarity came in to be able to know for sure that that is the way. There's another example that I tell you also in terms of driving. Uh, I think I've mentioned this earlier. Pardon me if I'm repeating certain things here. Uh, you know, earlier, you know, it never occurred to me like when you take a short trip, when you go for a big trip, we all stand together and pray. Okay, we are going to Kodekanal. Okay, everybody, come, let's pray. This is, you know, it should be a nice trip and a four hour journey and things like that. What if it is five minute journey? You're going to the petrol pump from here to fill petrol. That's all. Right? It doesn't occur to you that, you know, it's okay. God knows that trip, right? The other one, you need to intimate him more about it, but this one is less, you know, it's fine. Don't bother him with that. But that changed now for me because. <laughs> There was once I told you, right, once I was going for a, for a very short trip and I know that, you know, all I did was I had to break at the signal. I know I had done that, right? It just occurred to me, okay, what did I do? I just put the brake at the signal and then went. A few days later, I was sitting in prayer and there was a person who had the, the gift of prophecy and that person when prayed, the Lord told me, do you know that I sent my angel and stopped you from a disastrous accident? two days back. I was shocked because I never thought it to be a possibility of a disaster until I recognized that and I knew and God clearly told me it was I who pressed the brake because you were distracted. You get the point. Do you understand the intervention that God makes in your life and my life? Right? From then onwards, I have never felt, see, even it doesn't mean that, you know, I stand for 10 minutes and pray and things like that. I will not get into the car without asking, oh, Lord, your favor as I drive, please. Earlier, more confidence, you know, more wisdom it looks like, you know, you handle big things, you hand over to God, small things, you don't hand over to God. But now, small things, big things and all, no difference. You just begin by nature to be able to do that. Okay, so certain things that you learn by that and then God teaches. Okay, now quickly before we uh, uh, get to conclude, uh, verse 6 and 7 of chapter 4, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, 6 and 7. Okay, again, anybody else uh, can read? For it is the God who commanded the light, uh, commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Yeah, yeah, it's very important to know this. So again, remember, I want, when I say this, please take it as your story. This is yours. If you know the Lord, this is our story. It seems too great, too marvelous. Yes, it is too great and marvelous. That is why we fall in worship before God. That is why we are thrown in, 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 in a, what do you call, adoration, right? See, that is how worship begins. See, worship is not a mechanical thing. See, worship is something where you just stand. You, what is worship? You know, you fall flat or you, you, you just fall. I still remember... Um, <laughs> You know, the feeling, I'm just trying to uh, trying to relate to this. Long back when we were in IIT, I don't know, how many of you might know, there was a gentleman by the name Dr. Tian Session. He was an IAP, IAS officer and who was uh, the election chief election commissioner. And he stood for elections, I think, with against uh, Dr. K. R. Narayanan. He was supposed to, he stood for the elections to be president at that time. Now, he was a man of iron. We all knew him as a man who is no nonsense, no corruption. Uh, one of the bureaucrats we looked up to at that time. Okay, I don't know the true story, but you know we always held him at high, uh, you know, 
man of stature because he was bold in elections and all he said things political parties couldn't say anything nobody could say anything and he stood for as 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 uh, president but he 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 failed obviously and uh, dr kernar and kohl but the point i still remember we had invited him we meaning the iit chennai had invited him for a lecture and i still sit, you know i were, there were goosebumps in me when i sat uh, in that auditorium and when i looked at the you know the whole thing it was like you know we had the red carpet there and then soon we are all waiting for this gentleman who is that you know great man coming there was so much of elation in our heart you know waiting for a person and when he came we all stood up and clapped i also did because you know why did i do it not because everybody clapped because you know i felt so nice clapping for him right and then for a minute then i recognized later on i was recognizing imagine that's just for a human being whom we have adoration for right a valuable person that's the response that is worship that is worship when when we recognize oh my god why are you blessing me like this oh you have blessed me too much oh lord you have given me much more than i deserve even in small circumstances that brings adoration to say oh god almighty i don't deserve lord no no but thank you thank you that you have given thank you you have guarded i don't deserve it right that is worship so come back to this point look at it we have this treasure in earthen vessels right mind you so it is true we are earthen vessels only we are not superhuman beings we are fallible still in that sense no god has set us free from sin we are fallible still we must recognize that we have weaknesses which we are trying to overcome there are hidden weaknesses and sin that god will bring out in the right time uh, to to show us something that we felt we were strong in god will later on show us that we are weak in right why not because god has failed it is just that it's is the unfolding truth it's just showing that yes yes my child yes my child you you thought you were strong but you're not you are actually an earthen vessel and my grace is what is sufficient for you and if you would just trust me and you know exercise your faith in me that's what i want why because the transcendent power belongs to god it is to show can you read that again verse 7 and 8 once more it's beautiful glorious that verse it is 7 and 8 you read Second Corinthians three, four, verse seven and eight. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Yes. We are yes. hard pressed yes. on every side. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hold on. Crushed. Hold on. We'll we'll go to that. But digest this first. Yes. I am weak. I have difficulty. But Jesus, thank you. This 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 treasure. is in a person like me rightfully why so that the glory will always be to god can you imagine if we were superhuman beings with no weaknesses and you know preaching every time and you know no uh, you know seemingly no trouble at home and you know excellent and everything do you think that we will really from our heart respond to god in glory we will not i don't think i will that is why david says in psalm 119 verse 71 if i am right he says it is good that i was afflicted so that i may the if you look at it paraphrase right so that i will be on the right path i will always look at look at you not at myself you know it, it's good that i am afflicted it is good that i am afflicted because that recognition that's what i am saying that recognition how does it come it is because david understood this right that what we have is the treasure of the holy spirit the person of christ the the uh, person of the trinity the holy spirit in us which is mind boggling i can't understand i can't understand how it works but that's the truth that god as a gift has given us in fact in the in the same chapter later on we will see in chapter 5 verse 5 he says he who has prepared us for this very thing is the god who has given us the holy spirit as a guarantee right that we know right so it is a good thing to recognize and we must think about oh lord yes i am an earthen vessel but thank you that the treasure of the holy spirit all glory to you so when we succeed in things we rightfully will have the adoration for god when our family things go well when we have children when we have everything when we're not you know anything any success anywhere that we feel any joy that we have we will be joyfully giving glory to him right can you now connect these things exercise where do we start exercise what is faith without faith it is impossible to please god what is the definition of faith we saw then we saw that in hebrews chapter 10 there is need of endurance 
right? So that we will praise him. And then we came to the second Corinthians, the story, you're on my story. The story is glorious because the Holy Spirit lives in us and he is transforming us from one degree of glory to the other. That is our story. And then we came to this point to look at it as, yes, it is truly in earthen vessels because the glory has to belong to him. And that is why God will do that. See, many are circumstances, I'll tell you, many of us might be secretly having, we may not be able to share many things openly to everyone, but the truth of the matter is you have surely come to many points in your life where what you thought you were so strong on your own, you realize that you are not so strong on your own except for the grace of Christ. And when you hang on to the Lord, then you are strong. So it becomes real in your life. That's what I meant by exercise of faith. Right? God gives opportunity to exercise so that then your muscles become strong. The muscles of God, trusting God, will become stronger and stronger. All right? Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the other thing that quickly we will look at is the, the rest of the verses 8 to 8 and 9. Okay, C carry on. Read, C carry on with verse 8 and 9. We are hard pressed on every side, yeah. yet not crushed. Yes. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Yes. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Yes. Struck down, but not destroyed. Okay. I want you to, we, yeah, yeah. Probably you could even <laughs> write it down based on your version. You know, not necessarily now. Okay. Look at it. Afflicted in every way yet not crushed. You understand? When afflictions come our way, our natural thinking is what? I am crushed. It's gone. Lost everything. No. We think like that, but God says our story is not that. Our story is this. Why? Because that guarantor, the guarantee of the Holy Spirit is in you. Right? We are afflicted, but we will not be crushed. We are perplexed. My version says, we are perplexed, but not driven to despair. You understand that? We are persecuted, but we are not forsaken. Why? Because Jesus promised that I will never leave you nor forsake you. How do you receive that? By faith. And faith is not in vain, we know, right? It's the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. Can you see the Holy Spirit? Can you touch the Holy Spirit? No, you cannot. But how do you know? You know, because that's the Lord in whom we trust and he has given evidence for that. Persecuted, not forsaken. And lastly, struck down, not destroyed. This is your story and my story. Beloved, I am thinking to exercise my faith, I need to keep this in mind. Oh yes, I'm afflicted in a way, but I will not be crushed. Because of who? The transcendent power that lives in me. I will not be crushed. There is, so this is, you, you understand where our assurance comes from, right? See, the other one, when, you know, there's a general saying in poetry that says that, oh, I see the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Or there is um, silver lining, uh, what, is, what is that? Silver lining over every, every dark, cloud. every dark cloud has a silver lining. Oh, that's all fine, but that's not going to help you anywhere, right? It is us saying, I am a child of God. The Holy Spirit of God, by his grace, lives in me. I am afflicted, but I will not be crushed. I feel I am crushed, but I will not be crushed because of him who is the guarantee living in me. I am perplexed. Yes, aren't you perplexed in many areas of your life? Perplexed, right? What more should I do, Lord? Perplexed, right? Yes, God wants, <laughs> he intends that you be perplexed, but you will never be driven to despair. Wow, isn't it beautiful to say that? Persecuted, not forsaken. All of it in one shot may not be applicable to us, may not at all be applicable now, sometimes in different ways it might be applicable to us, but this is the story that is ours to be, right? But last thing, and we are closing in verse uh, 6 and uh, chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, read verse 6, uh, 6 to 10, read it. I think that will conclude because it will connect a lot of what we say. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 10. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home, in the body we are away from the Lord, hmm. live by faith, not by sight. 
we are confident, I say, then we and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. I didn't get that. Could you tr Sorry. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive what is due him for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Okay. So let, let, let me relate to the first verse that I read. Anybody can remember the first verse, Hebrews chapter uh, 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Everyone who believes in God, must, uh, comes to God, must believe that he exists and that he rewards. You understood? Can you connect that with verse 10 that we read? We must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he has done in the body. Right? It is, it is natural. It is logical. You know, one quick thing, let me tell you. I was explaining to Stuti two days ago, the, the whole logic of rewards in the sense of, uh, you know, why? because I connected with, you know, there is something called an appraisal system in, in, our, in our secular company. You know, I'm not saying that that is, uh, you know, taken from the Bible, but the point is, you know, where if I have five people in the team, I cannot rate all five of them as A, even if they are all best. See, even if all of them are highly qualified, best guys, best communicators, still I cannot say, I want all of them to be A graders. I will have to necessarily still distinguish them and say who is A, who is B, who is C, who is D. Right? Why? Why is that necessary? You know, if you think from it, uh, you know, just from outside, it looks like it's easy, right? Why don't you give all of them an A? Let them all be happy. They will not be happy because what about the guy who slogged better than the other guy? He will not be happy. He will think it is unjust, right? He will think that this is not fair. I have definitely done better than the other guy. He might be an A grader. I have done much more better than that A grade. So I need an A plus, right? So he will come to me and he will say, we have not, we have made a decision. So you, you understood. It, it's all, <laughs> also like I remember uh, Brother Rajkumar saying once, you know, about starting a meeting on time. So he was saying that regularly in the church that he, he had been very long back. He was saying that, you know, the, uh, the, uh, at the beginning of it, they would say, okay, we'll wait for five minutes so that, uh, you know, everyone will join. And then uh, later on, uh, you know, Rajkumar uncle asked the pastor, he said, whom are you respecting? Are you respecting the latecomers or the right timers? You know, so when you, you want to respect the latecomers, right? That's why you're waiting. So that's just a point that I'm trying to say, right? So there is definitely, right? The early comers would want to know that we start on time. Why should, why are you not respecting me? If you're respecting me, you should start on time, but you're respecting the late comers. Like that. So rewards are a necessity. It's a good thing. It is not a bad thing. And God never makes a mistake. That doesn't mean that, you know, God is unjust and then he will reward something better to, you know, this person that, no, 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 God is just, okay. But the point is this, we must believe that God exists and that he rewards those accordingly okay then look at uh, we read verse 10 uh, go back to verse 6 we are of good courage right so many things you can uh, look at the all the context that we read okay i i picked up verses across here okay and then i was trying to stitch it together to tell you right so we are confident we're not saying at the end of it that we lack confidence because we are perplexed and this thing and that thing. No, no, no. We are confident. Our confidence comes in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the person of Christ, in the person of the Holy Spirit living in me, who is a guarantor, right for me. I'm confident. Now, again, it is so honest to say that two things in verse 7. We have to, for we walk by faith, not by sight. That is the truth. Till our life ends here, till we meet the Lord Jesus Christ, we have to walk in faith. We have to exercise faith. Right? It's a good thing to exercise the faith because we know in whom we put the faith. Right, That is what makes a whole difference. And we know in whom we have trusted. Right, Then it says, we are of good courage. We would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. That's true, right? All of us. There are days when I have felt like that. Many days where I've felt probably it's, <laughs> it's better that Jesus come fast. Uh, let me, we, we'll be together there. And then, you know, if, if, if there's an end to all these things that are going on, and then can we go, right? Yes, that is fine. That's the right thinking. Only it's not a wrong thinking if you have that. Okay, because it says here also, we would rather be away from the body. That means our physical tent here. We would rather be with the Lord, yes, right? But we must, so whether we are at home or away, that's the instruction for us. 
Okay, that is all fine. We have eternal life. Whether we are there or here, we have only one thing to do. We make it our aim to please him. Right? So faith, may God bless us to learn to exercise uh, that simple faith in the Lord. You can go back and look at it. And I, there are verses like, you know, uh, related to that. You can think of Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, for example, and things like that. Do not rely on your own insight. Acknowledge him in everything, in all your ways, and then he will make your path straight. What is it? What we need to take away from here is to look retrospect and say, Lord, help me to exercise that faith. You will know that, right? I thought I'm exercising that faith, but then this is it. But I was feeling crushed. I was despaired. I was forsaken. I was destroyed. No, 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 no. You are not. You're afflicted, not crushed. Perplexed, not driven to despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. Struck down, not destroyed. So it is not our story. So like Pradeep Philip said, when we rise up that morning, irrespective of what the climate is, what you're feeling is, you can confidently say, this day is good because I see the sun rising. That means Jesus has commanded that sun to rise. I feel my heart beating. That means my life today continues. It is not yet the time my heart is to stop. My breath is continuing. I'm able to breathe because Jesus Christ of Nazareth has commanded George to breathe and continue breathing till the time he says, stop, come to me, right? That is what God has called us to. That is why you are the salt of the earth and light of the world. Otherwise, you have no hope. I have no hope. We have no strength in us. We have no capability in us to be the salt of the earth and light of the world. We cannot do that. But through the transcendent power of the Holy Spirit invested in every child of God that you are and I am, we can do that. We are called to do that. We are, we are, <clears throat> we are born for a time as this. And so we cannot despair, and it is a false thing to despair, to think that this is a bad time to be born. It is a false thing to think that, oh, I wish I was young today, younger than this today. No, we were younger at that time because God wanted me to be younger at that time, and I have a plan and purpose for my gray hairs now. I have a plan and purpose to be living in my 90s because there's a plan and purpose, and I'm glad for that time. I'm glad for my younger days, I'm glad for my middle age. I'm glad for my end of life because all are ordained by him. It is never outside of his plan. So oh God, forgive me. Let that be our prayer. Forgive me if I've wronged you by thinking, by my attitude being wrong to what you have done in my life. Forgive me for the complaints that I have been making. Forgive me. Forgive me for the... Forgive me for the murmurings, right? Don't we murmur? Yes, that is okay, but that's not okay. We ask God, increase my faith. Help me to trust in your word. Forgive me that I have not applied my faith in you, O oh Lord. O oh Lord Jesus, I was thinking something else, and I was deflecting. I was deflecting instructions that were coming to me. I was comparing with other people. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. Help me to be a pleaser of you. Help me to be one of those people who were approved, who had got divine approval because they just believed in God. May God help us. Shall we pray? So we, uh, um, I don't know, Michael, do you, uh, is it okay if I pray? Yes, yes, you can pray. Thank you. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you for, for the undeserved merits of you living in us. Oh God Almighty, we don't understand. Thank you that we don't understand. If we could understand it, we would have tried to define you. We would, have, we would have tried to limit you. Thankfully, Lord, we don't understand all that. But you have called us to just have faith in you. The assurance of the things that we have hoped for through your word and the conviction of the things that we have not, we can't see with our eyes. Oh Lord, increase our faith. Help us to repent. Help us to have that godly sorrow that brings repentance and not just remorse. Oh God Almighty, Holy Spirit, that you would grant that, Lord, we would recognize that you are at work in us to build us into your likeness from one degree of glory to the other. Oh Lord God Almighty, however failures we are, however we have turned away from you, however we have not recognized your goodness and your kindness, forgive us. Help us to continue in the walk of faith. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. God bless you.